I, um, today I'm going to show you how to make a four axis toolpath. I'm literally ripping off the uh, tutorial you can find in the file section of the Yahoo group. So if you want to, to go through it, just go to the Yahoo group and get gunstock.zip and you'll find gunstock uh, 101 GMAX in there. Get yourself a copy of GMAX and a copy of the toolkit and you can get going. Um, so the first thing to do is to get our part, which is a, a gunstock, there you can see it is. Um, on the, the x-axis and I've actually moved it when you load it from the, the zip file you'll find it's already on the, the, the x-axis pretty much I've, I've shoved it somewhere else so you can see how to do it a bit more clearly so what we do is we go up here to uh, hierarchy and if we click um, effect pivot only and then we click on our object and click uh, align to object we find that the pivots should be in the middle of the object um, and then what we can do is we can unselect effect pivot only make sure the move select and we can we can drag this but then if we we can then en enter values for x and y and we find it's now on the x-axis so we, we've got the pivot point in the right place and now we've got the, the actual thing in the right place but what we want to do now is just move that uh, to, to into the positive um, X position like that and if we imagine our piece of stock it's going to be as wide as this is tall and we might want to just adjust it slightly for the Z as well um, what I'm doing here is clicking either X or Y and that will restrict its motion so although upwards is Z um, as far as the viewport's concerned it's Y because it's up and X is right so if I click Y then I can only move it in that direction so that's quite useful I might want to just tweak that or I might not it's up to me so there it is just nicely centered um, there we go centered beautiful disappeared fine Okay, so the first thing we do, we've got our toolkit ready to go. We're going to produce parallel splines. Um, we need to put some numbers in. Our step over distance should be 0 0.05. Our x dimension is 33. We're not using the y dimension. The radius is 4. And we're going to do a, a helical set of splines. And there they are, which is quite nice. Some splines that are helical. And straight away we're ready to project these splines so we need to pick a reference surface click on that click on the surface now the name of the surface is is in there and we then click on the splines themselves so they should be selected and project around the x-axis that's going to take a while the reason the main reason for moving the part onto the x-axis is because the toolkit will only project around the x-axis um, in this case or downwards so it's now projected it so what I'm going to do is get rid of the original just press delete and we can see the new one but you can see it's a bit um, crazy at the ends there's a few points which we don't actually want there's, I mean here we don't want these but these are a bit odd so we're going to get rid of those um, similarly we don't really need the tool to do a big circle before it starts so in this case we go to modify and if we click on the actual uh, toolpath or spline we can click plus and vertex and now what we've got we can see all these points and we can select any of these points and we, if we cl uh, click delete we can get rid of some of them so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to zoom in here select these points get rid of those so we should already start to see some of this weird and wonderful stuff disappearing like that keep going any more for any more a few it might be a bit of a faff but it shouldn't take too long just to go through a few points um, might be easier to put those I'm sure someone else could do this a lot quicker than me Okay, Ooh. a few more over there. 
Bonsoir. So now we've got a spline with which is just the points we actually want. Just the useful points. So we can have a look at that. That looks a lot better. Okay, so now we want to start making a tool path. So we need to make uh, make a tool path. Select our ve vector calculations. Now we want the vectors to be perpendicular to the surface itself. Um, actually, before we do this, we need to move the center point because, generally speaking, a zero point for your machine is going to be somewhere above the, the work. You're going to be moving downwards to actually do something to the to the work. So. I'll just drag the center point. Oh no, well, unclick vertex. Then you can drag the center point just above the work. So we can zero the tool. We, I mean, you can position that accurately if you want, but it depends what you're trying to do. Okay, so now we can do a toolpath. We've got our make toolpath section and our vector calculation section open. So use reference surface, click that, and we'll click on the reference surface and we need to make sure calculate vectors is on because we want some vectors because it's four axis so four or five axis you need vectors we'll turn subdivide toolpath off because you don't need that for four axis um, the tool clearance well we'll just make it one so that it's going to lift an inch or a millimeter whichever it depend it happens to be in between moves um, cut depth with zero, so the tool will move down to this line, but it won't go below it or above it. The tool diameter, we'll put 0.75, and then that's ready. We just click Make Tool Path. Okay, <laughs> click the splines, then click Make Tool Path, and then wait. Hurrah! We have a tool path with lots of vectors. Now you see they're not. They're actually pointing at the surface, they're not pointing just towards the x-axis. This is a true four-axis path. It's not just a three-axis with two linear and one rotary. It's a proper four-axis path. Anyway, so we need to convert this into a... we need to export it, actually. Um, toolpath export. Export o options. So it's X, Y, Z, A. It's a four-axis machine. Full four-axis. Everything else can be left. Okay, so we can click the toolpath, click export toolpath and we can see our toolpath here at the bottom left <coughs> and it'll be going to the max script listener window again we just have to wait for this hopefully I'll edit this bit out ok so our toolpath is exported and we can click play and we can watch it. Now it's, what you can see rotating is actually the toolpath. Um, the tool staying more or less still, but what you will notice is that it's it's moving left to right. If this was a sort of false four axis path, just using three axes, that would stay still and just move up and down. So just to make it a bit more clear, I'll uh, actually delete the object. So we've just got a toolpath. So now when I click play, you can see it rotating just as you'd expect to see it on your machine. And just to remind people, to see the code itself, go to Max Script Listener, and there's your code and you can copy and paste it. So that's it. Uh, cheers. Bye.